So you guys don't understand, I do try to make videos while I'm on site, but once I start moving, it is so hard for me to pick up this camera and take photos or record because I'm trying to move so fast and I'm trying to get the car done. So I, I, I have so many videos on my computer of me starting the video and then never finishing it. So this one, I am determined to make a full video as, as, as far as documenting what I'm doing. Right now, I have this Suburban. I'm just gonna do the seats, the floor mats, and the headliner. I'm 80% sure I underquoted because when I was speaking to the person, the customer uh, yesterday, um, I was totally not focused on the conversation. I was doing something else. So I'm 80% sure I underquoted, so I'm probably not gonna make much money here. But instead of getting mad, I'm just gonna go with it, have a good time, it's beautiful weather. Finally, you guys know how much I complain about the heat here in Texas, but today it's beautiful weather, so I'm not gonna complain. I'm gonna enjoy this weather and just do the detail and make this video, finally. And actually, the husband contacted me uh, he called me, we spoke yesterday for about 20 minutes, but it's actually the wife that's here. And one thing you'll see is that sometimes that'll happen where the husband or the wife makes a contact, but then the husband or the wife um, is the actual person that's at the house. And with this one in particular, I asked him, you know, since he's gonna be at work, do you just mind if I get your wife's number? Um, but for obvious reasons, he said, no, just contact me. And that could be either because obviously he doesn't wanna hand out his, you know, his family's uh, number. Maybe she, he wants to make sure that he's the one in contact to make sure he, he, know, he knows the detailing side of things or he knows what he wants done, so he wants to be the point of contact. Regardless, that is gonna happen where, you know, someone's gonna make the contact and then someone else is gonna be at the house or at the location. So you do wanna ensure that everyone's on the same page and everyone, everyone knows what the detail is gonna entail because maybe the husband is, is you know, doing a surprise gift or something for the wife or their kid and then the kid or the wife thinks that they're gonna have a completely different service and then there's you know there's a there's a miscommunication there and not managing expectations so make sure that when you are con when you know when you're engaging with customers and you know you're talking to someone and are you going to be engaging with that person uh when you get on location very very key okay so i start off by just taking out my basic um uh uh, products that I have there so I take out my steamer I put my box of towels there and then I put my the keys and my phone in there and I covered up with the towel just for you know since I'm not I was gonna be around my car just kind of covered up then I get my ladder and I take it that's always serves as my headquarters as you'll hear later on in the video where wherever I put the um, the, the ladder is where I put everything else then I'll get my interior detailing products, which they're all in this little container, which is very useful. And then I'll put them here at headquarters, at base, that's what I call it. Then I get my good old electrical cord. This one's a 50 footer. Uh, most of the time it serves me well. Uh, I immediately hook up the steamer. It takes 12, 13 minutes to heat up. Um, sometimes a little longer. Um, it says 12 minutes on the website, but yeah, it takes 12, 13 minutes. Okay, so the customer contacted me out for the seats, the floor mats, which uh, some of them are actually over there. Uh, the floor mats, the headliner, which is pretty bad. She, uh, they have three kids and they haven't, haven't been cleaned in a while. So someone clean the back of the seats. Back of the seats here, you can tell it's pretty dirty. This is, this is my first time looking at it too, so I don't have any, this is my first time. So we're doing this live together. So we open up the seams. There's some dry crud in there. Again, it's been years since we cleaned it, so. A bunch of gunk in there that's easy to fix and i like when you're looking at this like it looks really bad right but i mean with a thorough vacuum you already eliminate a lot of the mess and then it's not it's not that bad so yes it looks like a lot but a thorough vacuum and you're already making it look a ton better so look at all these stains here um that's all stained right there if you could tell a bunch of mess now you could use compressor blow it out for us there but i don't get all fancy with that um Again, it's more efficient. Yeah, probably could be, but hey, I don't have it. So I'm gonna just make do what I got and it works great for me. So you see all these stains here. So now let's open this up. And let's see the third row, which the third row isn't all that bad. Um, typically the third rows are not that bad in suburb Suburban. So it's not, it's not entirely too bad, a good little agitation. will clean it up. So now, you know, I'm not gonna touch the, the plastic. I'm not gonna touch the, um, the windows, I'm not gonna touch the dashboard because that's not what the customer contacted me for. That's, that's at least not what they're paying me for. Um, yes, I mean, would it, would it look a lot better if I clean it up? Yes, but hey, that's not what he wants to pay for. So look at all that junk up there that looks like some soda pop, some soda pop. Um, so it is quite messy in here. Okay, and uh, yes, yeah, see, we have cloth here, we have synthetic fibers here. So overall, it shouldn't be bad. I mean, I always prefer to clean leather over cloth or, or, um, the door actually doesn't open from the outside. Does it open here? Oh, it's locked. Pop it open. There you go. Oh, close on me. 
Okay, and overall, you can tell it, it, is, it is pretty bad. Um, but honestly, like when it's worse, like when it's bad like this, that means the before and after is gonna be great and they're gonna love it even more. And this, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's gonna be too difficult to clean off. So, I mean, it looks like a lot, but it's a pretty simple process, I believe. So, I haven't, I haven't tried anything yet, but I think it's gonna be a rather simple process. So, you know, it, it, it's a lot of work, but very simple work. Um, which is most of what detailing is um, again like this is all very dirty but i'm not gonna touch any of it i mean i might wipe it down but am i gonna give it a thorough cleaning uh absolutely not especially because like i said i'm 80 percent sure 90 99 percent sure now that i underquoted myself but i'm not going uh i'm gonna just eat it up and do better next time so i typically typically do not do this but i'm gonna go ahead and vacuum first because the seats are rather filthy uh, with debris so I'm, I push both these seats back I'm gonna vacuum all of this in here I'm gonna vacuum all of this in here I'm not gonna I'm gonna go for like maybe 60% uh, improvement with the vacuuming because I just want to get it cleaned up a little bit before I start cleaning before I start agitating um, and same thing here I'm just gonna vacuum it again I'm gonna give another second pass once it's all done so I'm just gonna get most of it so I move these back I'm gonna clean I'm gonna vacuum all this up move these seats forward then get uh, in here these seats move these forward and get the rear seats and then I'll start uh, cleaning up. Remember, I always try to keep a headquarters at every detail that I have. So wherever this platform is, is where I put everything. That way, if I do need anything, I know it's gonna be right here. I don't have to go back to the car. If I, if I do have to go back to the car, then it's because I forgot something entirely. But other than that, it, it, it everything will be right here every single time so I know where to put everything. Okay, this isn't much of a biggie. I mean, I'm just vacuuming it as quick as I can. I'm only getting about 60% of the gunk off because it's just to set myself up for actually uh, cleaning the seats. Now, you will always want to pay attention to those uh, areas between the seat and the center console. There's always a bunch of gunk there. So yes, it might be a little nasty. It might be kind of yucky, but you have to make sure you're in there because it's probably one of the worst areas to clean and it's the best area for things to get stuck. All right, that was the front seats. Again, like, I'm not going to be perfect about it and throw away the trash yet and all that good stuff. Uh, well, I'm going to go get a bag right now, but I'm not, again, it's not perfection by any means necessary. It's just to get ready for the actual agitating with the brush and the steamer. And move this up again. Just getting it prepped for actual cleaning. And move this up. Now you can look down here and get everything that we missed from the front. So definitely needs a thorough agitation. Check the back seat. All right, and just more vacuuming on the back. Now, if you do have an air compressor, it works great at this point because again, I'm not going for perfection. It's just to clear up the area. So if you had air to blow things, to blow the debris and dirt out, that'll work. Now on the seats, on the cloth seats, you can't really use a compressor or air because um, the type of, uh, there's like essentially lint and like hair on there. So you can't really use um, compressed air all that much. At least I don't think, I could be wrong. Um, but uh, so you will have to vacuum it. And again, it's just to get, uh, to help me uh, work better. So again, I am gonna go back again and give it a more thorough uh, vacuuming. So I actually have headphones in. I normally don't wear headphones, um, but I'm starting to just for habit. I put it on the lowest setting possible because uh, I still need to have situational awareness. So don't be blasting. If you are wearing headphones, don't be blasting them in your ear where you literally can't hear anything else. You want to make sure you know what's going on around you um, for the you know to, for safety reasons. So here I'm gonna start cleaning the seats. I am not worried about being neat or clean at this moment. This is gonna be the, the initial pass um, to get most of the gunk off. So like APC, overspray on the way. I'm not worried about any of that. My main concern is just getting the uh, seat clean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with um, APC. I'm gonna hit it with the uh, um, grids garage with a carpet attachment and then follow it up with a steamer, mop it down, move on to the next one. Hopefully I'll finish these two seats and the carpet within an hour or like 45 minutes i think we'll see all right so here i'm just gonna walk you through the process on the headrest i typically go with just the uh, upholstery brush and then follow it up with a steamer just because it's not that much uh surface area there so it's just easier to use a hand brush uh because with the with the uh dual action with the uh, brush attachment it just it's a little too big and i can't really it's, it's harder to maneuver around the headrest um, but essentially the entire process i use on the interior it's gonna be APC, agitate with a brush, and follow it up with a steamer. Now, as you can tell, I'm working in sections. I'm working the top half of the seat, and then I'll be working on the bottom half of the seat. 
Now you will have you will need several towers towels for this because you're using it um, you're using the uh, APC in the brush and then you gotta steam it which is gonna it's gonna be not saturated to where like it's soaking wet but there's gonna be a, a, a decent amount of um of liquid there so you will have to have uh, plenty of towels to make sure that you're gonna be able to mop it all up um, and later on I'll show you that I'm also gonna use the steamer with a towel wrapped around it right now I'm just using the steamer straight onto the cloth seats. And you know, it's it's your preference on which method you want to use. Um, so as you can see here, I'm gonna follow it up with the steamer and I'm just using the brush attachment. Um, if you want to use a towel over it, it does help reduce the water, but then you gotta mess with like uh, making sure you're covering the, the triangle head and that eats up a little bit of time. So it's, it's you know, it's it's a, you gotta pull and push some areas to see how you wanna work. Uh, I, I specifically use both methods as you see later on in the video where I do put a towel around the brush head. Uh, but it just, it just depends um, on how much time you have. You have like an air mover to, to speed up the, the, the drying process. But I always start off with the driver's side seat, at least most of the time. That way, that's the first one that dries if they have, if they have to get in their, uh, in their vehicle and drive off once it's done. Then at least that side, that you know specific seat will be done so they're not getting their butt wet or anything like that. Or um, you know messing up their, their driving because it's, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's not dry yet or anything. So I always go with the driver's side first, then move on to the passenger and the rear seats. Now, uh, it's again, it's... Now, depending on the cloth or depending on the material, will kind of yield how long I use a steamer and the um, the brush, the uh, grid garage uh, polisher on the seats. Uh, cloth seats are a bit tricky. Now, if you don't have a steamer, and you're doing it by hand, it is a lot more work. And trust me, because I've done plenty of cars in the past with just an upholstery brush, and it is a lot more work to get done. You can still get great results by all means. You most definitely can, because I did when I didn't have a uh, when I didn't have this polisher here, or when I didn't have a steamer. But it is a lot more work for you to get proper results. Because you're literally just scrubbing away as much as you can on cloth seats, and it is a pain. Um, so a steamer and a polisher does definitely help uh, with these type of details. And cloth seats, you know. They're actually not that difficult to clean. I'm, I much prefer leather seats over cloth seats, uh, but they're actually not that difficult. It is still a pain to clean just because of the type of material it is, but you know, it's, oh, it's, it's rather straightforward, just as everything else in detailing. It's, it's rather straightforward. The, the main difficult part is, hey, can you actually do this for four, five, six hours um, continuously and still provide uh, high quality results, results? That's probably the biggest challenge with detailing so you want to make sure as you just saw there i'm, I'm looking all between the seats because i'm not just you know looking on the on the front side but i'm looking at the side bolsters and everything and here's uh the example i've told you about i'm using the uh, the towel on the brush attachment as well um again two methods it, this time this method it'll help uh, reduce the amount of water on the cushion but again it eats up a little a little bit of time on actually setting up the uh the towel on the brush so you know you got to play with it see what's your uh, what's your preference to that type of style all right, now we're moving on to the back seat. Again, with the headrest, I use an upholstery brush. Just easier to do it with the upholstery brush. And here I am again using the, um, I think from this point on, I use the uh, the towel wrapped around the um, the triangle head just to reduce the amount of water and uh, kind of help me mop up as I go. Uh, and again, I'm not that tall. So, you know, a Suburban is pretty big, so I fit pretty well. Um, if, you know, if you're taller, if you're like 5'11", 6'1", you'll have a pretty uncomfortable time uh, squeezing into it. I mean, a suburban, yeah, you can kind of fit it. It's a rather big vehicle, but you know, a sedan, a coupe. I um, mean, you try to reach these like hard reach areas or these like weird angles. It'll, it'll, it'll give you, it'll make you a little sore um, if you're just starting off or if you don't like stretch or something. And here I'm cleaning the, um, I don't know what you call those, the whatever you call the sliders, whatever. But um, they were definitely very, very, very dusty. And you all, I mean. I'm using a steamer here, but do you absolutely need a steamer to clean that area? No, not at all. The steamer primarily for me is used for um, the seats, any any type of fabric. Now, when, one thing that really came in handy for for today for this detail was using the steamer for the headliner. Uh, that was, and uh, you know, sadly, unfortunately, I didn't get any videos of me cleaning the headliner just because my camera had um, my camera was overheating and I needed to charge the battery, and from then I started working. I didn't even bother getting that getting the, um, the camera back out. But with the headliner, what I did was I would put a towel around it, around the triangle head, 
I would steam it, spray APC on the headliner, and then agitate it with a brush. That worked fairly well, but what really worked is me just using the brush attack, the um, the steamer with the straight nozzle, just shooting the straight steam, and then breaking apart the the stains and then mopping it up with a towel. Not following it up with APC or anything. I'm simply just using the steamer and the and the and the straight stream of steam. I spray it directly to the stain. I break the stain apart and then wipe it down with a towel, and that one was working phenomenal. So that's just something to keep in mind if you are running into a, uh, some stains on the headliner uh, and you need some um, different ways to clean it. That, that it, it was definitely an effective method. And there was tons of stains on the headliner as you saw earlier in the video. So I really wish I would have got a video of that, but I, just, I had to keep on moving. Because I, I was, you know, for one, I, I underquoted on this one and me trying to make a video was just eating more time, was adding more time to the detail. So I had to, I had to keep on moving. So I, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to slow down and, and get the camera out just to record me doing the headliner. Now I'm gonna be cleaning the uh, cup holder pull down area. As uh, if you've seen my uh, most one of my recent videos on interior cleaning on cleaning dashboards, uh, I always use two brushes. One is to agitate, the other is to mop up. Uh, so it's, it's there are two brushes from Detail Buddy. The smaller one is to agitate. The um, the bigger one is to dry. Uh, and it's very useful because I, I'm not gonna be able to fit my towel into like those very those small nooks and crannies. So having a, a brush definitely helps with drying okay i don't know if it's considered a fail or not but i did stop midway because um i just i just had to start working um so i'm but you guys saw for the most part what i did everything here's the after of the seats um and i actually didn't get anything of the headliner um there's still a bunch of spots that didn't come out um and i, I was informed by the customer that these were like milk stains when the kids were like toddlers and they're actually all now like 9, 11, and 13 years old. So these stains have been here for quite a while. So even how, even though there is quite a few of stains still left up there, the customer was um, pretty pleased to see how dramatic it looked because uh, it was much worse. And they've been having it like that for, you know, 10, 11, 12 years now. So um, big improvement for them because it's been there for so long. But overall, I mean, the customer only wanted the seats done. Uh, that, that was his main concern. The seats, the floor mat, and the headliner. Of course, there could have been, you know, dozens of other things I could have touched up, like all the dashboard, the windows, the glass. Um, but not going to touch much of that, or at all, really. Uh, see, there's a bunch of stains here, all across the floor mats, uh, the, the actual carpeting of the floor. Um, so there's, there could have been a lot more work to be done, but they don't want to pay for that right now. Their main concern was just the seats of the floor mats. Um, so it came out pretty well. Again. Just another angle. As you can tell, again, I'm not shying away from saying like, look, there's still a bunch of stains there, but definitely a big improvement from how it looked in the beginning. Okay, so I did a decent job keeping track of my progress. And I'm telling you, it does eat up a lot of my time. I mean, it may add 30, 45 minutes on top of the detail to, to, to change the camera around, to make sure I'm in shot, to, you know, make sure I'm getting it. It just, it does add quite a bit of time, which is why I'm not the biggest fan of, of trying to make these videos. Um, because I can make them, but they're kind of not as, um, intentional in terms of how I set it up and how the knowledge or the information that I share with you guys and that's more the important thing than trying to you know show you guys what I'm doing on a daily basis anyways that concludes this video leave any comments down below of anything on this video it was just kind of all over the place showing you what I'm doing throughout the day now I just got to get the customer out accept payment walk them through the process explain anything and then I'll be on my way home so see you on the next video